How did you screw with computers at school? We would take a screenshot of the desktop as it is. Then delete all the icons off the desktop. And then make the screenshot we took the wallpaper. Watch people futilely click on the wallpaper. And enjoy. Edit. Something else we'd try on occasion. Since we were in graphic design class and had access to the necessary programs, besides paint, was create fake windows warning dialog boxes. We'd make them say things like, delete computer, comma, delete hard drive, comma, or something else totally obnoxious like that. Then we'd just remove the no option or make both the options say yes. When it was done we'd add it to the wallpaper that's already on the computer. So that it looks like it's a real dialog box that's popped up on the screen. This only worked once or twice that I remember. I think we fooled the programming teacher who was really just the baseball coach teaching a class in order to remain as the coach. It's harder to get someone with this one. But it's equally funny. I did this too but left a couple of functioning icons on the desktop so if they click on that. It worked fine but if they click in the others it stangely isn't working. Much head scratching ensues. Fun times. My computers in high school had a network that linked all computers together. We had personal folders so we could access and work on homework and things like that. What I did was upload emulators for the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo 64 on the public folder. Along with tons of ROMs. They later called me to the library because they found games on my account. Turns out. They saw my RuneScape program I used to work around their firewall but they never searched the public folder. Not at school. But at work. I wrote a script that called the Windows Task Scheduler and made my boss's mouse buttons flip around, right button to left click and left button to right click, every day at a fixed time. I did this about 2 months ago. And it clearly bugs him but he hasn't been able to work out why. I combined all the computer pranks I've heard at the time. Flipped the view upside down. Took a screenshot. Flipped it back. Set the screenshot as the desktop background. Created a fake shortcut to Firefox to be a forkbum. Basically a bat fire that shuts down the computer when launched. Not sure how safe. Turned off desktop icons. Flipped the view upside down again so everything looked normal but the mouse pointer seemed upside down and would move opposite and to top it off I put a piece of a post-it note on the mouse so it wouldn't work. A bit of an overkill. But seemed hilarious at the time. Got in trouble with my IT teacher. We had Win XP at school and could only use the guest user to do work and stuff. Bias was password protected. But it had a floppy Seacat boot. So I made a bootable floppy. Copied command line winrar on it. Stole SAM file from system folder. Later on at home brute forced the password for 8 hours. On the next day everyone could log in as an admin and install all kinds of shti. This went on for about a month until someone found out. IT techs and teachers were fking pissed. No one ratted me out though. I was kind of a hero lol. Computers were all on the same network. Big school. 2800 students, approx 150 computers on it including faculty computers. We learned the ability to use Nets and Lab 208 or whatever computer a friend was on and we could send messages, basically texting. This evolved to we could cheat on certain tests for some of our classes. Never got caught. But near the end of the year, the drafting and design teacher was doing a presentation to about 150 students and someone sent a message to her computer. It popped up on her screen. I wasn't a part of the presentation, I was told the message was harmless. But after that the network admins changed some settings and we weren't able to do it anymore. Was a good run though. Also. Removing the trackballs from the mice. One day in junior high we stole all of the mouse balls from all the mice in the computer lab. This was before the laser ones. Literally every single one. The school's solution after this was to super glue the covers on. So you physically can't remove them. This was a problem though. Because with those type of mice you do have to clean the little ball sockets from time to time. But with the covers super glued on. That was no longer possible. So eventually all the mice became really crappy and almost unusable. 
my friend and I entered into the operating system itself a virus that would essentially hunt through email accounts with edu address, so all teachers and administration, and display a picture of two women having sex. If the operator clicked, equals 10 times. A video started. If the operator clicked, 20 times the noise started. The only way to get rid of it was pretty simple. CTR. Alt. Det and use taskbar to shut it down. Not that complex obviously. Although to be honest I didn't do a lot of programming. I did some of the basics. However I mostly did the strategic planning of how we were actually going to get it done and implement it. My friend's dad was a programmer and hobbyist hacker. So he actually helped my friend design it. I still find it hilarious that his dad was willing to fck with the teachers. He must have really hated our school lol. However most teachers didn't know that. They didn't know who did it. But it was hilarious. Not me but some guy has been updating a games folder on the school's public H drive. None of the teachers or tech supports guys can get rid of it or set it up so we can't use it. No one knows where it came from except it's been there since forever. It has counter strike 1. 6. Day of defeat. Halo CE. A Halo odd simulator. It actually works. I too have questions. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Team Fortress Classic. Doom. Kota. Minecraft. Old School RuneScape. ES. Morrowind and a few others. Edit. Like a lot of people asked. I went and looked at the games folder to try to copy it. Much to my dismay, and others, the folder is now almost all gutted excluding a proxy program. Halo CE. Undertale. And Counter Strike 1. 6. I did not deliver since I don't think those games are why some people wanted a drop box of the file. Sorry you guys. Not sure what happened but I'm just as bummed as you are. Sorry in advance for mediocre English. It's my third language. I think it was in 2004. My IT teacher let me use an old laptop for a project. Inside it was a floppy disk with the username and password for all users on the learning platform we used. Including teachers. The rest of the semester I logged into the teachers accounts. Found the hand-ins from the best students. Downloaded. Made it my own and handed it in from my own account. Never got busted. But I realized I used almost the same time altering assignments as I would have if I just made my own. Also had some fun with the left rule Trojan from time to time. When I was in the 12th grade all the computers ran Windows XP. Fellow classmates were crazy for Minecraft. One day in computer lab during lunch I saw an open computer. I walked over and opened notepad and entered the code for deleting system 32. I then changed the icon to Minecraft. Named it Minecraft. Eggs and put it on the shared drive. The next day about 22 computers became bricked. No one ever found out it was me. Finally. I can contribute. I was in college. In a classroom. Waiting my turn to an exam. Which was held in another room. Bored out of my mind. Behind me was a PC. I saw a red button that said 220. I say out loud what does this button do? And turn the button. The button now says 150 and a loud bang and smoke comes from inside the PC unit. I turned the power supply unit from 220V to 150V. Which toasted it. The room was full with my colleagues. Everybody looks at me in disbelief. I begin to laugh out loud. Not believing what just happened. Luckily. Nobody told on me to the professor. Which was a difficult guy. My school district used Macs pretty much everywhere. A couple of the most common pranks. There was a key combination that would invert all the colors on the screen. I like it was all the meter keys and 8. It was a lot of fun to do this to someone who left their computer unattended and didn't know that. One of the function keys, I think F11, would move all the windows to the outside edge of the screen. Showing the desktop. Pushing it again moved them back. But there was an animation associated with both of the movements. If you held shift while tapping F11. It would do the same thing. But with the animation slowed down. The thing is. 
it didn't matter if the animation had completed or not, the machine would queue up another action for each time you hit F11. But wouldn't cancel the animation in progress. So if you were quick enough and someone wasn't paying attention, talking to their neighbor, looking a book, etc. You could lean over, spam shift plus F11 a few dozen times and effectively force them to watch all their windows slide in and out at a snail's pace for a minute or two. So computer class for most of grade school was nothing more than endless typing classes. She sells seashells by the seashore and other tongue twisters to get us practicing home rows and typing quickly. Absolutely mind-numbingly dull. Sure. Getting to play Commander Kino Wolfenstein after was nice. But the reward was nowhere near worth the effort to reach it. And the teacher would constantly get frustrated with me ditching homerals and finishing faster and accurately without them. So one day. With us both being frustrated with each other. I restarted the computer and opened the BIOS setup utility and started changing random settings to random values. Child me was vindictive. My school had one of those annoying monitoring programs so the librarian could quickly see what you were doing and take control. And usually the ass would just turn the computer off. Someone found out then when she started watching a small square appeared in the top left corner of the screen. If you right click this square you could reverse the control and take her computer over. Someone took over and rather quickly hit delete on the windows folder. It didn't work but it helped stop the overbearing watchful eye of the shitty librarian. Our school network ran on windows for workgroups 3. 0. Machines were locked down so you couldn't run your own programs on them. However we discovered if you put a modified win. Any file that allowed you to install your own programs in a network drive that came before where the lockdown version was stored it would use that and you could install stuff. And that was my first introduction to Doom Multiplayer. Somebody threw a Molotov cocktail into the window of a computer lab at my school. It was over a weekend. Thankfully. So nobody was there. But it destroyed all of the computers in the room. My friend and I got blamed for it because the teacher whose lab it was thought we didn't like her, which we didn't. Thankfully our alibi was that we were on a plane flying back from a school exchange trip to Belgium when the damage occurred. There were several teachers on the flight to corroborate our story. That. And. You know. Plane tickets. Over the course of the school year. I slowly increased the size of the cursor on my friend's laptop. At first nobody could tell the difference. But within a semester I managed to get the cursor as big as the chrome icon without him seeing the change. Once he figured that out I also made the default language Korean for his computer and made it call out the time every 15 minutes. He had a friend who actually knew Korean so that got taken care of pretty fast. But it took him 3 months to find the setting to stop it from calling out the time. For some reason Halo. CE was installed on every single computer in my high school so whenever we had to use a lab for any class that's all everyone would do. The most memorable time screwing with a computer at school though was definitely in my French class. We went to the lab to do some online work with a partner. However, our class was larger than the number of computers available so the teacher set my partner and I up on the computer at the front of the room. The administrator computer. I'm sure most of you remember the fact that an admin computer could hijack the other computers, in case a student was doing something inappropriate. Oh the irony, and control their mouse and keyboard or shut it down. Realizing we had been given godlike powers. We immediately set to work abusing the FCK out of them. It was always just one person at a time. At first subtly jiggling their cursor or erasing a few letters in a document. It finally came to a head when we turned safe search off and forced a girl to watch one guy one jar and she completely lost it. Our teacher was completely oblivious that we were the culprits and sent a message to the principal that someone had infiltrated the school's network. Meanwhile my partner and I got off scot-free. I don't think that girl was ever the same after she saw a man insert a glass jar into his anus and shatter it with his sphincter. Not that big boo it hey. Back in middle school we were taking tests in the computer lab when we were done they asked for volunteers to stay back and help reset everyone and supervised for some reason. 
so my friends and I say sure and decide to change every monitor to a picture of the Queen of England saying America's her bitch. Or something like that. Keep in mind this is a small school in rural Oklahoma so there were about 15 computers maximum. 2. Not me. But a friend. We'll call him Stanley. And my friend's friend is also in this story. Friend's friend will be named Ross. This was in the 6th grade. Stanley and Ross have little fun photoshop battles with each other. They're actually done using Ms. Paint. But basically they'll try and find pictures of each other and edit them. Then share them to the student chair drive a massive drive where students can put files and access them from any computer. Everyone dicked around on the student chair drive. Now. One day Stanley is browsing it and finds a folder called Roth last name. Score. Thinks Stanley. In it. There are a ton of random pictures. He chooses a random one and edits in a fat guy into the corner. Just copied and pasted in a little picture of a fat guy to that image file. But. It turns out that Roth's folder was full of pictures for the yearbook. And he was a photographer for it. So. Lo and behold. Our yearbook has a random fat guy in the corner of an image. Stanley turned himself in and got 6 weeks technology suspension. But it was the talk of the school for a little while. They never did a recall or anything. So that fat guy has been immortalized in our 6th grade yearbook. I have an R laser on my phone that allows me to use my phone as a remote for any television projector etc. We had a project due one day that we weren't quite finished with so before class started I blacked the large monitor and projector that couldn't be undone by the teacher's remote. So we got an extra day to do our powerpoint. That and giving myself administrator powers through safe mode command console. I could control anyone's computer from where I was at including teachers. The following year they removed CMD access. Stroke. I filled 967 GB of around 1. 2 TB of the shared school server with different pictures of shoehorns. I got called into the office for it when they found out it was me and made me open up my account so they could see what pictures I was trying to hide. My parents were called in and everything. When I got there at first I had no idea what was going on. I'll never forget my dad's face when he found out. It was a mixture of confused and upset. Still totally worth it 5 years later. Long live shoehorn. If you have admin rights, if you don't ask a teacher to sign in for you because you forgot your password, going into command prompt, cmd, and typing shutdown i. This will open a shutdown tool used for shutting down any computer in the network of your liking. Shut down computers that teachers are using. Or students for that matter. Even shut down the whole school if you like. For teachers that really annoyed my eye would send over 100k test prints to their printers causing them to endlessly spit the paper from the tray to the finished bin. Along with that you can also down change keys around in the registry so f could type dart. Deleting the internet explorer icon and making your own shortcut to a immediate shutdown of the computer will make them rage. The list goes on. I messed with the computers at my middle school so bad they had to bring in professionals to fix them from a third party. That I also ran in circles for the entire 4 years I was there. A long. Long time ago. When I was a wee little undergrad computer science major. I spent significantly more time in the Linux lab than was technically necessary. Part of this was because you could remote log into the other computers in the lab and then fork bomb your session to force whoever was currently logged in to have to reboot. There's nothing to teach you to save often quite like devious classmates. Went to a small Christian school. It was an interesting mix of computer tech. In one class we had a computer with a cassette drive. Fun stuff. In the computer lab we had a couple of computers that could run simple game. The favorite game was Guerrilla War. I don't remember the actual name. But you played gorillas throwing bananas at each other by entering force and angle of throw. To play the game. You had to execute it in DOS. I replaced the game file with a stupid simple script. So the next time a second grader went to play the game. His computer repeatedly told him. I am Satan. You are going to die. Give me your soul or I will kill you. Double quote. He cried. 
I think I've told this story on Reddit before but I love computer school stories. Sophomore year biology they somehow gave us access to the control panel on the Windows computers. Ended up going into the speech controls. Would type funny shti and annoy the teacher. Junior year web page design class while I was bored I found out they never deleted the games off the school computers. They just deleted the game start menu selection. Played solitaire and pinball every day until they removed my start menu functionality and access to the C drive. Last but least our school district used novel networking software. We found out you could send simple text messages to people if you knew their student ID numbers and were logged into the system. To put it briefly. Kids send out a message to the entire network. Including teachers. Administrators. People from other schools. Kid got his computer privileges revoked that same day. We had a principal who was German. She had one of those school rhymes and it went night walks in the house. Swoosh swoosh. When she got to his swoosh part she would almost do thisness salute with her hand. So this was a joke among the whole school despite her insisting she it was wrong to make fun of her. One day we walked into the computer lab and every desktop background was a picture of her saluting with a bright red and yellow background with a bay in big bold letters. Even the teacher started cracked up laughing. It was brilliant. After that she started changing the way she would do the swoosh part of her chant. For the record she was a great principal and we all loved her. Gained access to one of the IT guy's computers. He had set up a link to his personal dropbox in one of the network folders, and snagged copies of their software that they used to remote into students computers, along with other stuff. Then proceeded to use it to access computers my classmates were using and remote control them to look up stuff when they weren't looking or just delete their projects they were working on. I also created a replication to uninstall sandboxing software they were using. You couldn't just uninstall the software it was password protected, then proceeded to install various applications. Finally one year. I decided to just straight up install Windows 98 on a bunch of computers. Should've seen the it's head spin.